since we've started dealing with inductors, which are basically coils, with their governing equation given by this thing, with the derivative in there, so that would clue you in that this particular component would have a lot of interesting behavior if your current continuously changes. And what is one function that we know continuously changes all the time? Well, that's the sine and cosine functions. So that's where we're talking about. If you plot out this current over time, because it's a sine function, it goes up and down, up and down, up and down, right? And then it's got a max of 2 amps, and then it's got a certain period, so on and so forth. And you'll notice that they chose specifically the period of 120 pi for your omega, so this is actually 60 hertz. Very similar to the alternating current that comes out of our wall sockets. And you can see that it's alternating current because this current alternates all the time. And we've already talked about why in the generator it's very natural for the current generated there to be of such form. So doing this question then is really just taking that current function and deriving it through time. Just as a more general approach, instead of carrying all those numbers around, I'm going to call this some I0 which is your maximum current amplitude, times sine of some omega times t. We can sub all the numbers in later. But then before we proceed any further, there's one little catch here, because they're talking about for the EMF induced in the coil, that's implied that it's the voltage drop through this particular component. So in, we're talking about drop. We take the negative of the delta V, so that's where the negative sign disappears. So a, a small tiny detail, I hope you don't get too hung up on it, but we can move on from that hopefully fairly quickly. Uh, of course, we know that if we take the derivative of this thing, sine becomes a cosine, and then by the chain rule, omega comes out, and that's it. This is basically kind of like your Vmax, and you can graph plot this out as well. Over time, this is V across your inductor where you have some Vmax and then because it's a cosine function if we mark out a few interesting spots here with a cosine it's gonna curve more or less like this and so on and so forth. What you see here is the behavior that your V, the top of this hill, happens to be in front of your current function so we say this that the voltage across the inductor leads the current in the inductor by a phase of pi over 2. So to finish off the question, at this point we can just plug in numbers for uh, we have 2 Henry's and then we have 2 amps and then we have 120 pi so the whole thing gets you 480 pi cosine 120 pi times t as the function unit, of course, will be volts, since we're talking about change in voltage. That basically answers the question. Now, just to double stress the leading part, we can also make it the same sine function as the current, but say that we're shifting it to the left by pi over 2, so we add a phase of pi over 2. So that actually answers the question, but before we leave this completely, I'd just like to also present to you a similar case, but with a capacitor, because we always know the capacitor and the inductor have similar but different properties. For your capacitor, as it charges up, it provides a voltage drop, a size that's Q over C. That's the governing equation for the capacitor. Now, what is charge? Well, it's just the integral of your current. So we can do a very similar thing and just integrate the current. So in this case, your V drop across your capacitor is going to be when you integrate the sine function, you're going to get a negative cosine function. And we have to put the omega underneath as part of taking that integral. So we actually end up with a negative cosine function, so if we graph that out, so this is Vc now, some Vmax that uh, number-wise I'm not going to care, but that's Vmax right there. 
but it's negative cosine so it looks like this and what you see is that the peak here compared to the current the same current it's coming a little bit later it's coming pi over 2 later instead of being in front of it it's behind it so in this case your voltage is behind or what we say lags your current function by pi over 2 worth of phase again very complementary kind of behavior and just to leave you with a mnemonic to remember which way things go because this is a very common situation right putting inductors and capacitors in an AC circuit we write this for a capacitor your current is in front of your voltage or I guess we use the bad term EMF and that spells ice whereas for an inductor you got the L you have the same E but that's leading your current so you can think of Eli the Iceman Ta-da! I know it's dorky but it's effective alright just use it